Dan's I'm a welder by trade, and I really enjoy the art of welding. It's a matter of showing how much control you have of the heat and everything like that. And most welders would agree that welding two pieces weld wire together is a tough challenge. So, but it, it, it works well with the, these sculptures. Now right now I'm gonna focus on making the uh, outer body shape of the frog. Uh, if you were looking straight down on it. So I guess it's kind of like I'm, I'm drawing with my heat in the rod. There's a manipulating of the rod that I'm doing that you can't really see the twisting and the, the pulling of the rod to make sure I don't get it too hot. Well, actually a frog, this was a challenge given to me and uh, we were discussing the cattail and, this, and then she was like, you know, it'd be cool if it had a little frog sitting on the, the leaf. And it was like, wow. And she was saying, nobody will make frogs. They just worked out extremely well. So this is the, the t back of the frog, the, the top side. I just got done with the underneath side. So I'm gonna give them a little more girth. What I'm doing, yeah, I'm, I'm essentially making the body now and I'm doing a skip welding technique. I'm welding two pieces of wire together by adding rod, you know, by the art of molten puddle manipulation. What this eventually does, it's hard to get a really good bead uh, definition, weld bead definition, when you're just welding these two wires together because they're so hot that it's almost uh, what we refer to as slaggish. There's not real bead definition, but so I skip weld and uh, what happens there is that I, I end up putting more metal in and uh, it becomes what they call a heat sink. That there's enough material there that it, it welds easier because it'll take more heat. And it's hard to explain when you have a finished sculpture and you're trying to tell somebody on the street what you do that, you know, these are basically, they're made one drip at a time. It's funny that some of these sculptures that I'm doing, I, I have an easier time, and I guess it's just finding my medium, I have an easier time sculpting them than I would drawing them. People, the people's reaction right now, what I've found by doing outdoor shows, which I wasn't getting in the galleries, is that the galleries you hear people are looking at your piece or not. When you're dealing with the public with an outdoor show and venue, to see them actually say, wow, this is neat, this is cool, uh, is the icing on the cake. I mean, it's one thing to make the art and enjoy making the art, but to see somebody's reaction and, and see that they're, they're actually, they love it, and uh, it's creating such a reaction is, you know, that's my little favorite thing <laughs> that I get off of it. I, it's just, uh, it's exciting and, and great for me. And, uh, that's the initial body of the frog. Well, it's not copper wire, this is carbon steel. So in reality, when I get done with these sculptures, they're actually harder than normal steel, than like if you were to pour carbon steel. Just because the weld, welding rods, they add more properties to them because you're actually melting the rod, so you're burning up properties. So they add more to the rod to be able to, uh, the, the object is to make it stronger than the steel that you're trying to join together. I am trying to do the webbing on his feet. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm making his front legs, but started taking myself seriously uh, was shortly um, after I started doing these oxyacetylene sculptures. I you know started doing some of the bigger ones and was uh, lack of a better word, I was kind of, you know, shocked at how they look. I was like, ah, I just did that? Like, wow, you know, this looks okay. Um, and then friends started looking at it and going, wow, that's really nice. And, and, uh, and it actually took a while before, uh, I mean, I'd have people say, well, you're an artist. And I'd look over my shoulder, you know, who are you talking to? You know, <laughs> the, the person behind me. And uh, I guess it, you know, it took longer for me to uh, come to terms with that than other people. When you do weld, the one thing about welding is, uh, and when you're joining materials together, welding, because of the heating and contraction, or when it cools, 
uh, it creates stress, and we call it weld pull. So it doesn't just lay on there. It, when it's cooling, it's actually pulling against itself, and it just kind of comes to me. You know, I um, just like with the metal art, a lot of times I, I love going into the scrap yards and looking at materials. And a lot of times I'll see a certain shape or something other like that that will, uh, for some reason, I, you know, it's, it's not so much I know, either I'll know what I'm gonna make with it right off the bat, or I just know I gotta have it, and I'm gonna make something with it later on. I have no clue what it is, but it's just, you know, certain shapes and stuff. And then a lot of times, uh, just an idea will pop up and I'll just, you know, I can't get it out of my head, I'll be pondering it, uh, what I wanna do. And, uh, and then I'll just keep working it until I, I get it to fruition, I, I suppose. Just to do it. Um, there was a lot of apprehension at first, starting with the art. Am I good enough? Am, you know, will they like it or not like it? And, uh, you know, uh, I was told just to do it. You know, put one foot in front of the other and give it a try.